took over as CEO in 1976, and when he did, he took a look at something called the J&J Credo. Has anybody ever heard of the J&J Credo? It was created by Robert Wood Johnson back in 1947. And basically, the J&J Credo is uh, several paragraphs about, okay, this is what Johnson & Johnson stands for. So he takes over in 76, and you know what he says to his team? He says, you know what, guys? I've been in this company for years now, and I've noticed nobody pays any attention to that credo. It's our values. Nobody pays any attention to it. So he said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have a retreat. I'm going to have my senior executives come in, and we're going to look at that credo. We're going to, there's going to be some outcomes here. He said, either we're going to accept the credo as it's written, or we're going to edit it in some way, or we're just going to rip the whole thing up and get rid of it. He said, because I'm not going to be the CEO of a company who has these values that we're not adhering to. So he gets together with the leadership team. They make a few slight revisions, but for the most part, it, they keep it as it is. And so between 76 and 79, he personally goes on a road show, talking to employees from the company and saying, this is our credo, this is our values, this is what we're going to stand for. And the first sentence of that credo said something to the effect of Johnson & Johnson supports doctors, nurses, and mothers and fathers and their kids. That's what we're here for, to provide this group with the greatest safety when it comes to pharmaceuticals. And then 1982. I don't know if you can recall, but 1982, the Tylenol crisis. Okay, Seven people in Chicago died over the course of a couple of days from taking Tylenol laced with cyanide. And so, and so Burke has to make a decision. He has to make a decision. You know, everybody, the FBI and everybody was saying, you don't need to take every bottle in the country off the shelves. Just in the Chicago area, Burke makes the decision to take every bottle of Tylenol off the shelves in the entire country. You know what it costs J&J? &J? $100 million. Analysts, before he did that, analysts were saying, business analysts were saying, you're never going to see Tylenol again. The Tylenol brand is dead. They were saying this in 1982. Question, how many people have a bottle of Tylenol in your house? <laughs> yeah. Cost them $100 million. Eight months later, they regained 85% of their market share because he made that decision. And you know, he said, I, I, I couldn't make any other decision.